Okay, so I have two 305 Chevy small blocks right here. One is a factory roller and one isn't. Okay, so I already checked both of the casting numbers, and if you don't know what that is, that's that number that's right here. This is the bell housing side, the back of the engine, and there's always a number right here. Well, actually, on the other one, it's on the opposite side. Anyway, this one's right here. This is the older one, and it's on this side, but there's going to be a number that looks kind of like that. And the best you can do with that is get online and look up, uh, Google something like small block Chevy casting number identification or something like that and you try to find your number to see what it is. In this case that's kind of pointless because I already know one's a roller 305, one's a, a old school non-roller. I know they're 305's because of the bore size and if you're a guru like me you can pretty much tell by the space between the cylinders. That's a dead giveaway. When you got about that much space that's a 305. Of course, it could be another small board, small block, like a, I don't know, some of those engines that, that I don't even know if they really exist. Like 262s or whatever. I, I'm not even talking about that right now. Okay, so I went ahead and looked up the casting numbers online. And this gets kind of confusing. And, and Okay, so the non-roller motor 46077. What I looked up, one, one site says it's a 78 to 79 two bolt, 305, obviously. Another, another site says 76 to 79 two bolt car. Well, the two bolt, obviously the car, I don't know the year, I, I don't know. So that's not really super important, but just to point out that sometimes some of the sites are a little bit, you know, that kind of, doesn't really exactly disagree with each other, but doesn't exactly match. Who cares? I'm just saying. Okay, the other the other number is a one four zero nine three six two seven. One the one website comes back as an eighty seven to ninety four roller or flat tappet one piece rear main seal. <laughs> then again, like I already know that. You can see that it's a one piece, and you can see that it has the, the roller stuff on the top of it. So, but anyway, and then the other website says 88 to 94. The other one said 87 to 94. This one says 88 to 94, 305 Chevy car. No, sorry, it didn't specify. But like I said, that doesn't really matter that, that important. But that's a good way to look up what kind of um, engine you have. Like whenever you have the heads on everything, you really can't tell. Some people have rumors about, oh, if it's a, a 400 small block, the dipstick is on this side and that and this and that, and there's the, the, the placement of the uh, freeze plugs on the outside is a way to identify them. I am pretty sure all of those have been proven to be kind of like myths. Like that's not a solid way to identify something. You know, if it's a 400 small block, you could feel under the harmonic balance for a counterweight, and that's kind of a dead giveaway. But then again, I think there's some later model 305s or 350s that are externally balanced. I'm not even trying to get in all that. Uh, if you have the heads and everything on it, best way to tell, cash number, and that's that's what it is. Okay, so now what I'm going to talk about is why one is better than the other. Almost hands down, the later model factory rollers are way better for one obvious reason. And this applies the same thing if you're comparing a 350 old school uh, pre-87 or or 86 and back. The, the change over here is 87. I don't know if that's to include it or not, but I think it's 87 and up or 86 and back. But but any, anyway, so more than likely, hands down, the later model blocks are way better and the older ones have no real advantage at all. Okay, the first difference, the biggest difference, is the fact that this one is a factory roller cam. And it comes with this little top piece. And on the block, these little things are casting into it like these little bolt hole mounts for this. Uh, don't know what it's called, but it holds down these things that I don't know what it's called either. I'm really, I'm really failing this video already. But um, it has this little, little tray in there to hold down these little devices. And these little things are absolutely necessary for a roller lifter. This block has came with roller lifters. 
So roller lifter has to stay in one position. It doesn't spin like the old school. It has to stay in one position. And this is what makes sure the roller stays in line with the cam. That's why this is a roller block. Factory, it came with a roller cam, roller lifters, this thing to hold the roller lifter straight, and this thing to hold it down, and the bolts holes to make all that possible. You see, this is one of the biggest differences, and this is also the biggest advantage over a factory roller block. You see, the, the old school one doesn't have a place to bolt that thing down. Whether or not you can make that happen, I'm sure, I, I don't even know. I don't really care. But of course you can install a roller cam into an older block. Absolutely true. The problem with that is you have to get retrofit lifters that have some kind of device, some of them horizontal, something to hold them straight. Okay, so the other difference that has to do with the cam is a factory roller block will have this thing on the front. This is like a cam retainer plate. On the factory roller cams, it has a place kind of like machine for it to fit right there. You don't have to have a cam button. This is the, fa this is the old school block that's a non-roller. If you wanted to put a roller cam you're gonna to have to figure out how the, the you're gonna to have to figure out how to install a cam button that rides against the timing cover and properly clearance and you know do something like that. So it just makes it that much more complicated. Not saying that's a huge deal, but it's that much more complicated and it's gonna cost more money. Alright, to be honest, I don't even know what to think anymore. I'm I'm gonna admit I haven't messed with engines like this for over fifteen years maybe almost 20 years since I built my, my last I haven't messed with these for a long time right back in the day 15 20 years ago the only way to get a roller cam in your old school small block a retrofit I'm pretty sure any hydraulic lifter hydraulic roller that was a retrofit was in the neighborhood of about 500 bucks for a, for a complete set right I was going to try to sound smart and do a price check real quick on my computer over there and I found some retrofit hydraulic rollers for a small block for, a, for the full set for $99 on eBay and that puts it right in the price range of <laughs> it's all, like in other words that might not be an advantage in the, no more do your own research but that's definitely a big uh, difference is that the you know I thought I was going to say some smart stuff about it and teach some stuff about it, but from the looks of it, you can you can get the retrofits pretty cheap now. That brand on eBay is probably some cheap, questionable brand, but I don't know. I think that they'd probably be fine. I don't I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I swear, every time I try to sound smart on a video, I just kind of just make myself look dumb. Anyway, let's move on to something else. So that's that about the hydraulic roller cam. I thought that was a big advantage. Maybe it's not. Who cares? Okay, so this is the hydraulic roller, 87 and up engine. That's the other one. One of the other big differences that people say about them, and I don't know everything, but they say the late models don't have a way to bolt on a mechanical fuel pump. Well, guess what? You know, some people, there, there's, there's like five different stories about what people say about this. And I want to say that I've actually seen some that have this totally solid and doesn't even have a plate. And then there's the more common ones that I've seen that has a block off plate. Well, this one has a block off plate and it actually has the hole for the fuel pump rod that goes right here that goes up against the cam. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, if you're to run a cam that was a hydraulic roller that was factory, it probably won't have the lobe. It probably won't have the lobe on the cam to drive the fuel pump, which is right here. That looks like a lobe, but it's actually perfectly round. So in a normal old school one, you would have a lobe right here to drive your, your mechanical fuel pump. So the question is, can you run a mechanical fuel pump 
with this late model factory roller engine. Obviously you can't with a factory roller cam that doesn't have the lobe for it. But whether or not you could put an old school cam in there and have the lobe on it which totally defeats the purpose of having a late model roller block in the first place. I don't know but here goes, here goes a late model roller block that does have the mounting part for a mechanical fuel pump and it does have a hole that goes all the way through you know to drive it against the cam if the cam had the lobe. This is the old model one and obviously it has it because that's what it came with. Last but not least this is the rear main cap that's the rear main bearing right? The rear main seal is in this aluminum housing that bolts onto the block and as you can see the rear main seal is one piece. That's what is meant by a one piece rear main seal. I'm, I'm, as far as I know that's what an 87 nut block is, a one piece rear main seal. The old school block the rear main seal is underneath this. It just comes in two halves that, that lay into the into a groove of here. Not here, but here under there. Like inside this stuff, is it comes in two halves and it's a two-piece rear main seal. That's the old school, I guess, 86 and back blocks. That's that's the other that's one more significant difference between these types of engines. Okay, the bell housings are the same, like the bell housing pattern is the same. As, as the same thing with most uh, older Chevy engines, they're almost all the same. Big blocks and everything. The way that the oil filter adapter bolts on, it appears to be the same, but I can't guarantee you anything on that one. There goes the knock sensor. These didn't come with knock sensors because they weren't computerized. Well, maybe some of the later model ones were, but whatever, but it has a hole for it. Motor mounts go on in the exact same place with the same bolts. And I'm sorry if I didn't cover everything or miss something, but everything else about these engines should be pretty much the same. The cranks do not interchange. The heads do. The rods should be the same. A lot of the stuff is the same, but some of it's not. One more thing to consider. There goes, here goes the two backs of the crankshafts. There goes a one piece rear main seal crankshaft. There goes the old one. I really am going to let down everybody on this video, but I'm not sure if the, if the flex plate flywheels uh, interchange or not, but I'll just tell you what I know. Usually the older school blocks have the bigger 168 tooth, and a lot of the later model blocks like that have a 153 tooth, which is a smaller flywheel and requires a different starter. And I'm just going to stop right there because I really don't know. It's getting into, this, this is just getting into too, too many specific things. But hands down, this one wins as being a better, a better choice because of the factory roller stuff. One piece rear main seal. I don't know if that's better or not. One good thing, you could change the rear main seal without dropping... I was going to say, no, you have to... I, I, I'm... I'm I think you could change the rear main seal without dropping the pan. From the looks of it, it looks like you can, but I'm not sure. Which one's better? Which one lasts longer? I don't know. They both work. Uh, that's not a real advantage. Alright, so that's all I can really come up with now. I'm sorry if I left some stuff out. There's a lot more to be said about that. You know, especially about that fuel pump thing. I think some of them have the plate with no hole for the rod. Some of them I think have a flat cassette area where you can't put nothing on it and so forth and so on. I don't even know. Uh, but like I said that applies to the three, 350's as well. It's just almost an identical comparison. You have the old school 350 and the roller 350 that's an 87 and up. But also I do believe that all 87 and up motors are not rollers because some of them are TBI's that had provisions for rollers but not the roller in it, blah 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 blah, I don't even know. But a way to identify a factory roller is like it shows on the top that place to, that thing to, to mount the, the, the top bracket on that holds down these things that holds the lifter straight. Whatever they're called. 
Okay, so there's a reason why I have all these engines in my garage right now. And the near future, I'm, I'm in the engine building mode. I haven't built engines for, for a long time. And I want to build a race car. And I know this is the, the worst choice is dealing with the real five. But I also have a, a, a turbo over there. And I, I was just going to play around with maybe throwing a turbo on one of these and seeing if it could do anything. If not, I also have a 350 over there. And that's really what I plan on messing with is, you know, better engines than 305s. You know, this is, this is, this is, uh, I know a lot of people try to defend them, and I do as well. Um, they're a good engine on a stock vehicle that doesn't need to be fast or nothing. But this is, this is, this is like a, this is the, the bottom of the barrel, almost the worst, crappiest engine ever made. It, it might as well be a 350. It's, it's so, and some people say, oh, well, you can, uh, Buy all the same parts and bring it up. Not exactly. If you want to go forge with this, go ahead and go look up a, a forge rotating assembly for a 350. You could do a 383 for $1,100 with forge pistons, uh, nice scat uh, rods with cap screws, some nice rods, and one of their cast steel cranks, which is probably way better than a regular one, right? But if you look up those types of uh, rotating assemblies for a 305, they start out about 2300. If you want to get some forged pistons, uh, the cheapest ones I've seen at Summit, I think is DSS for about 379. You can get a set of 350 pistons that are forged, right? If you want to get forged pistons for a 305, guess what? They start out about 680 bucks, more than double the price, or almost double the price, whatever. One more thing, as far as heads are concerned, a 305 needs a tiny chamber because it doesn't have that much volume. That's why the factory heads are 58cc chambers. Also, the bore is too small to handle a 202 valve. Maybe it can, maybe it can't, I don't really care. Or even it can, it doesn't matter. Even with a 194 valve, the valve is too close to the side of the wall. They call it, I think that's called valve shrouding. It's, it's supposed to not really take full advantage of it. In other words, that small bore kind of throws it into a category of never mind. I mean, I mean, trust me, there is so much stuff stacked against it. So people that defend those, they want to sound smart, but, but the truth is, no, that is a, that, those, are, those are junk. I mean, run one stock. I mean, if you have a plan for it, like if you have an idea what you want to do with it, and um, I mean, do it, you know, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. I wouldn't be mad. I, I, I'm not going to get mad at anybody for building them. I mean, they're so plentiful and cheap. But those are some really bad things about them. Like you can't get a, a good, you can't get a good set of pistons for them cheap. You can't. You're kind of you're kind of uh, screwed on the heads a little bit. And then at the end of the day, you have to spend more money. And it's just a 305. I mean, might as well be a, it's might as well be a 350, man. That's all I got to say. So I'm totally contradicting myself because I'm actually probably going to build one of these and put a turbo on it. But the only reason I'm doing that because I'm scared I'm going to blow it up and I don't want to blow up my 350. I want to use this as a guinea pig so if I don't get it right the first time I can learn from that and it will be that much easier not to blow up my, my other motor. Anyway, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe in.